So, hello, a warm welcome live from our headquarter in Milan. This year we are looking back to 100 years history of uh, HK Italy and we've decided to celebrate this important event also for our community under the motto Crescere Zusammen uh, or in English growing, developing together. Of course, we are uh, highlighting the history of our German-Italian Chamber of Commerce because we are proud of, proud of what we achieved together and uh, of the past successes in shaping our economic partnership between Europe's two largest industrial nations. So characterizing um, the interwoven value chains, uh, innovative strengths and uh, the creative entrepreneur spirit, which we see each and every day. But beside this uh, history, uh, however, we want to celebrate this important event above all uh, with a few to the next 100 years in which we shape important future issues together with our partners. So with creative freshness and with innovative design. Indeed, Germany and Italy have always produced outstanding design that is famous and invite all over the world and created real trends in the process. So just think of Bauhaus or what is known as Italian design or made in Italy. Unfortunately, the pandemic crisis still holds our economic in its spell in uh, 2021, but we see light in the end of the tunnel and uh, history shows us that crises also offer enormous potential for opportunity and innovation. So I'm personally convinced that in these times it is also our obligation as a chamber to show perspective, perspectives uh, to develop new things, innovations, and this we like to do with our partners. In this sense, uh, the video competition, sustainable design for the future um, in the fields of energy, mobility, consumer behavior, housing and living has just been developed in cooperation with uh, Goethe Institute Milan. This was aimed to young designers from Germany, from all IHK districts and the winners of the competition from the IHK districts of Fulda, Darmstadt and Gießen uh, have the opportunity to present themselves at the German contribution of the 40 Saloni of the Milano Design Week and during the world's most important furniture fair, the well-known Salone del Mobile. We are very happy and we are proud to have contributed to bringing innovative and igniting ideas into an international context. And I congratulate the winners once again for their excellent work. And I'm very curious about the today's roundtable discussion. Uh, and with the now uh, further ado, I pass the word to our partners, to Goethe Institute, to Ms. Oswald Richter. Thank you again and have a great day. Thank you. A warm welcome as well from my side. On behalf of the Goethe Institute Mailand, I'm particularly pleased that we have set up this design project, Innovative Design for the Future, in cooperation with the German Italian Chamber of Commerce. Thanks to you, Mr. Bock, as a head of the AHK, for having been willing to create this project with us in the middle of the long, hard winter lockdown here in Milan and to culminate with the event today at your place. We were lucky enough as well that we've met interest in participation of young German designers. The best of them we will see later. Here we meet each other, the Goethe Institute Mailand and the Chamber of Commerce in our mutual effort to make young designers from Germany known in Italy and to present them and their work, especially during the Design Week in Milan. As a second common main topic of both organizations, I can emphasize here is to promote and support sustainability, especially when it comes to design, architecture and other spheres of culture. My special thank goes not only to all the designers and the winners, who took and take part, but also above all to the jury members and our moderator. Two of them are present today physically, all the others virtually. Now it's up to the moderator to start the roundtable. Thank you again and good luck.
Hi everyone and welcome uh, to Sustainable Living Innovating Design for, uh, for the Future, an event promoted by AHK Italian and uh, the Goethe Institute of Milan. Uh, I'm Salvatore Peluso, a writer and curator based in Milan. And uh, well, first of all, I would like to, to thank the two institutions for, invite, for inviting me to, to moderate uh, today's uh, digital event that will uh, be uh, broadcasted on uh, forisalone.tv uh, website. Um, uh, well, I, I would like you to invite you to, to, to see the, the crashresusammen.it website because in the last few days I had the opportunity to, to, to see this, uh, uh, this website that is uh, uh, part of the celebration of the centenary of uh, uh, AHK uh, Italy. And, uh, and also this event is part of uh, uh, this celebration. Uh, but today is just the, the final part of a longer process started uh, earlier uh, this year with uh, an open call uh, to, to, to designers from all over, Germ uh, all over Germany uh, dealing with the very different topics. So from, uh, from mobility uh, to, to new ways of living, from uh, life cycles of uh, materials to new innovative uh, products. Uh, so uh, for, uh, from all the, the application, six uh, videos, so six projects, six ideas were uh, selected by uh, uh, a panel of experts uh, uh, that is uh, made by uh, Mr. M Marco San Michele, that is here with me, the designer, uh, design curator at Triennale Milano. Then uh, we have uh, connected online uh, Nadine Vicentini, managing director of uh, Bayern Design, and uh, Mr. Peter Jäger, uh, that is, who is uh, architect and uh, representative of the German-Italian Chamber of, Co uh, of Commerce for uh, uh, Piedmont. So, as a moderator, I always prefer to, to make uh, questions and not to give answers. So, for this part of the, the event, I, I, will, I have some questions for, uh, for our jury. Uh, so, first of all, maybe we can begin with uh, Mr. San Michele. Uh, we can begin with a, a, a general comment of uh, the video you have seen and judged in the past few months. Now. Uh, first of all, thank you. Thanks, Salvatore, for um, the introduction and thank you, Goethe Institute and the Chamber of Commerce, Italy, Germany. I mean, with these two entities, Triennale, which I represent, collaborating for many, many years in several directions. The last one was the German Pavilion at the 22nd Triennale, but my first memory on this uh, specific journey was that I had a lot of fun to watch the videos, also because I think that an important part of sustainability is working with behaviors and convincing the users, the clients, the audience that uh, to change behaviors, it's something very personal, very related to the intimate side of everyone everyone and in everyday life. So uh, I could see that many of the designers and people involved have been able to tackle this very specific aspects, uh, either if it was in mobility or fashion or the product or toys, everything was related to something that from a specific act, from a single moment, from something that is very simple, we can change it, their behavior of, of something that seems uh, um, frozen in a paradigm that we are uh, not only forced to change, but we need to change because, I mean, not because we are here in a booth and we are already sweating and the, <laughs> the temperature is up, but we are just faced a summer that was one of the hottest summer ever in Europe. And so we are, uh, living uh, a world that is really changing. I remember when I was at school and teachers were telling us young kids like, okay, we are going to live soon in a uh, 
plant a third completely different from what your parents or grandparents used to live and actually we are living the tragedy at the moment so it's something that belongs to our generation the time of change and the needs to change from single specific acts so this is my first statement thank you marco thank you so much. Uh, I, I maybe also Nadine Vicentini, can you ask you the, the same question actually? A general comment on the, the, the video, the projects, the idea you, you have seen. Yes, of course. Thank you, Salvatore. And also thanks um, to all the, the organization team for this great um, competition, I think, which is very important um, nowadays. And I think the entries. Pardon? Ah. I think the entries showed very well that. Um, designers play a particularly important role for the future um, with their ability to challenge existing issues and to contribute ideas and solutions above and beyond. They generate a great impact for sustainability and uh, the contributions also show the complexity of this topic. So circularity of design, the development and handling of materials and processes, cultural understanding, transformation of our behavior and also the need of a new mindset um, within this process. And um, the designers of the different entries expressed a lot of passion for the topic and their projects, um, but reminded also of the responsibility for this profession and, gen and design in general. And um, some ideas are very inspiring and had a very good storytelling, especially by way of presenting them in a humorous and aesthetic way. So. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Vicentini. Uh, Peter Jäger, do you want to add something? Yes, so hello also from my side. So thank you very much for this invitation to this really interesting uh, competition. Um, I have to say, first, of course, the team is absolutely uh, important because it's really we are in the changement of the society. We need the changement of the society. This was already told by Nadine and Barco before. Um, to me, so I was really am amazed about the different videos and I was um, very astonished about the professionality in the communication. What Nadine said before about the storytelling. So it's not only about to think uh, this product and um, it's about communication and about to communication, uh, communicate the idea of the changements. And, um, I was really surprised about the quality. Uh, I mean, there were some works which uh, a huge team was involved in camera cutting uh, and uh, about to, start, to tell the story. And I think it's very, very important that designer are really a key point because a design is um, interested, interesting for everybody. It's like a trendsetter somehow, people which are looking in, to the future. And that's why they are very, um, important uh, because there is a huge uh, uh, listening uh, platform and so the communication of these new ideas it's very very important and i was really uh, impressed by the quality of this communication so a big compliment to everybody and uh, uh, for me as was very nice to be part of this jury team thank you thank you mr jäger also i would like to to add that all the videos like give uh, the, the impression of the, the, complexi the complexity behind the, the projects. So maybe in the 20th century, we, we didn't have that idea of complexity behind the whole uh, process of, of production of an object in particular. Um, so I would like to, to, to continue with Mr. Jäger. Uh, wh while I was uh, preparing this conversation, I was reading a classic of the history of design by uh, Mr. Renato De Fusco, that he saw the, the, the design uh, as made as, uh, uh, with four factors that, that are design, production, sale and consum uh, a consumption. Uh, in recent year, uh, between the, 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 the climate crisis 
and uh, and the, and the pandemic one, these factors are changing a lot, in my humble opinion, especially the last two. So the sale and consumption of, uh, of, of objects of, uh, of the design. So I, I would like to ask you, Mr. Jaeger, if uh, you think that uh, uh, there are uh, there are emerging uh, uh, interesting perspective in the in the world of design that this pandemic has uh, accelerated. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, I have to say, not only the sale and the consumption uh, changed, also I think somehow the production. Um, I think, of course, this uh, unpredictable crisis that we have to li live with during the last two years, Mr. Uh, Book already told, uh, now we see uh, the, the, the light out of the t tunnel, but um, it was very hard to everybody and uh, there was a lot of new uh, questions coming out and to ask which need uh, new answers. And so we have new habits, we have new needs, and uh, so there are new products coming out. And um, I think that, um, of course, on the other hand, we all make a big step forward in the uh, theme of uh, digital adjacent. So if we talk about uh, smart working, uh, if we talk about uh, distance teaching, uh, smart, pardon, smart uh, working yeah, with, uh, with the platform. And so I think this is really a different way to, 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 to work together. So um, what I see that, uh, of course, also the, all the e-commerce industry increased a lot during the last two years. I mean, there on one side, we have this mass cons consumer by, pro promoted by Amazon services, and, but the people are coming much closer to the, um, the e-trading. And this brings together that out of this particular situation where new answers are asking for, by the market, there are a lot of designers which comes out with new new products and um, they are able today also not only to design them but also to produce them we have a lot of tools like uh, 3d printing laser cut and really to make then also the packaging of this kind of new pr product and to promote them by themselves with marketing and with a good uh, social media communication and so i think this is a big opportunity to give a new answer on the market, to give more small, smaller additions, new products, but told in a more personal way that, that what we are used to buy on internet platforms. So small markets, I was interested, uh, very amazed about the, the coffee, I mean, also Studio Randall, for example. It's a simple uh, idea, maybe in Italy, not so uh, well for the market because we're used to make a different kind of coffee. But the idea to have a direct trade, it's, I think it's a very interesting and this is very an opportunity which comes out for me also uh, due to this pandemic crisis. Thank you, Mr. Jäger. Now, now the, the next question is for Mrs. Vicentini, who works for Bayer Design, that is to me uh, a unique uh, initiative. And it shows how in the 21st century, it is more important than ever to create networks and new connection, not only between uh, similar reality, related, uh, related reality, but also among those uh, people or companies or realities that are isolated or uh, located in a fragmented context. So could you tell us uh, about what you do? Mm -hmm. Yes, Bayern Design is um, the international competence center for knowledge transfer and collaboration on the topic of design. Um, through a variety of projects, we underline the importance of design and the key role it plays in tackling economic, social and sustainable challenges. Um, Bayern Design exists now for more than 30 years. Um, we have offices in Nuremberg and Munich. And our inner driver is um, the idea of design connects. That means we link design and economy, act as a point of contact for all types of industries and institutions concerning the benefits of design as a cross-sectional topic. 
And for us, it's important to promote networking um, between designers of all disciplines, companies, universities, institutions, and different associations. And the purpose of this kind of collaboration is um, to identify new perspectives um, within our complex transformation process and to increase also the awareness of design and its potential. I mean, we can't solve these huge challenges of our time alone. We have to do it together. Um, so what do we do exactly? Um, we, we host forums for entrepreneurs, design talks, lectures or workshops. Um, we create exhibitions like, for example, our booth um, Open Minded to New Visions at the ERR Mobility, which takes place next week here in Munich. Um, the storyline of our curated exhibition is the designer's mindset. Um, so human minded, holistic, visionary, agile and solution oriented. And we combine this with showcasing examples from Bavaria based companies, agencies and universities. And what else? We inform about current trends, um, topics, design as a location factor in Bavaria. And um, for example, we have another exhibition titled Sustainable Packaging at the Fachpark Trade Show at the end of September in Nuremberg. And there we present innovative ideas and concepts for this um, sustainable packaging created by designers from around the world. And we believe that smart design as a part of circularity opens up um, a host of new opportunities and um, the aesthetics of good packaging design reflect um, the sustainable image of a brand. And um, one of our main events is the Munich Creative Business Week, um, the largest design event in Germany, um, which takes place every spring in Munich. Um, this year we had our 10th uh, anniversary. And as a platform, this design week gives companies and designers the opportunity to present themselves in a variety of events. And a couple of years ago, uh, weeks ago, we launched the theme for 2022, which is Moving Horizons. And um, in the past year, we all had to learn how to deal with uncertainties, um, at times successfully, at times not so much. And we at the Munich Creative Business Week um, want to be a protection surface for all the issues that move us, that move society and that we yearn for. And we do this together with our partners to discover new horizons. And, and last but not least, we support design funding um, by the state of Bavaria. And to a large extent, we are sponsored by the Bavarian State Ministry of Economic Affairs, Regional Development and Energy but also by the members of the association by a design forum, which are different varying companies, agencies, chambers of commerce, universities and so on. So. Thank you, Mrs. Vicentini, on highlighting how important it is also to design system, to design networks. That is actually what you, Marco, do with, uh, with the Triennale in Milan. Uh, also because in the last few years, the world design system uh, has been radically changing direction towards uh, a more conscious uh, way of production. And for example, we have the new European Bauhaus project that is uh, approved of this. So can you tell us about the, the, the initiative, its ambition and the, how Triennale Milano is responding to it? Oh yeah, networking, it became a, a an infrastructure of the design business and, and of the design community more than ever. Uh, the new European Bauhaus uh, was a surprising initiative launched by the European Commission last autumn. Actually, we were all very surprised in Triennale, so surprised that me and my president, Stefano Boeri, uh, we decided immediately to respond to this call of uh, President Ursula von der Leyen. And actually Triennale was the first uh, European cultural institution to 
reply and start a series of conversation. And of course, because of the uh, claim and the resonance of the old Bauhaus, by the way, I graduated at the Bauhaus Universität in Weimar in 2003, <laughs> in 2003. So I felt very connected with this heritage. Uh, we immediately um, involved the Goethe Institute and started this conversation with Germany. And then we had France, Netherlands, Czech Republic, but also countries that they never had the Bauhaus tradition, such as Spain and, um, and also Italy. But um, actually what this um, initiative, uh, the main goal is to connect with the European Green Deal and in 2030 to uh, open it up uh, the, uh, these kind of achievements to a wider community. And of course, the European Commission found out that the design community was the fertile one in order to uh, imagine that this call could add um, more than um, a single group of uh, researchers of universities. So they started and now the European Bauhaus involves several partners. Actually, Milano is the city in Europe with more official partners. We have, there's Triennale Milano, there's the Politecnico di Milano, the university, there's the Catholic University. The, we, have, um, we have also MEET, which is a center for digital innovation and communication run by Maria Grazia Mattei. And so together with these institutions, but also with the European Commission, we are actually exchanging ideas and we are building networks with other countries. And at the moment, the next um, important uh, occasion will be the new European Bauhaus Prize. Triennale and other members are part of the jury and we are actually selecting uh, finalists in different categories, but many of the categories are related uh, to the sustainability. Uh, we also have uh, cultural heritage, infrastructure, uh, rural economy. So there are a lot of um, intersection between the new European Bauhaus and the existing networks, because this is another element that I would love to stress, because there were already many existing networks in Europe, uh, where Triennale is a, was able and is still able to uh, embrace, but there were like the Erasmus, the Cumulus, and then we have a large amount of Biennales and Triennales and Design Weeks that are used to talk about sustainability and, and, and and Green Deal. So we thought that an important statement for European Bauhaus was also, was also to um, make these voices stronger and, and part of, um, uh, as, let's say, a European community that in the recent years we felt very distant. This is also, I think, the new European Bauhaus for Creative Industries is an occasion to reinforce the idea that we are part of a continent. We are sisters and brothers of something that is not uh, changing after borders. If we have climate change, if we have pollution, if we have problems, it's not if I cross the border with France or Austria, it changes with Italy. So it's a problem that uh, affects everyone. So in this sense, I feel that the um, new European Bauhaus has been and it is an occasion to uh, uh, make the network more valuable and, and hardworking at the same time. The next, I mean, the important goal is to launch five pilots, five, five projects that will be in five nations and with colleagues from uh, Belgium, Portugal, um, other countries, we are Denmark, for example, we are all working also to uh, have more entries from Greek, from Cyprus, from Greece, from Cyprus, from Spain, which sometimes they um, uh, have other concerns or other uh, issues or other problems in their agenda. And, and to make this project more 
more unique and more uh, inclusive in terms of involving other other countries. Uh, what Triennale is mainly doing, and, and I'm ending my questions, is also to make this experience uh, livable and, 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 and useful for, for everyone, also outside the framework of new European Bauhaus. We are also imagining for the next um, international exhibition planned for next year, the 23rd edition called Unknown Unknowns Introduction to Mysteries, to have a sort of a European pavilion where topics like um, new European Bauhaus can be hosted with panels, with workshops, also because uh, one, one thing that pandemic learned, uh, that we learned out of the pandemic is that workshops and, and, and online uh, network is something very tangible, even though we can't touch each other and we are far from each other. And in this sense, the, the videos that I remember also Studio Crossklein and, and, and Studio Randale, I remember that when I was watching the videos, I, I laughed. I enjoyed in the, in the sense that because it was clever, it was unique, and it was also um, understandable, but not only by a design lover, but sometimes I think if my student or my mom can enjoy this, it means that it's working. Yes, completely. Thank you, Marco San Migueli, and I look forward to see the unknown, unknowns the exhibition next year that yeah. will bring the the complexity of design to to another level i hope so because <laughs> this, this, this there is are our challenge there are challenges we we still don't know there are so yeah. that that is the, the the topic so the now it's time to to give the floor to to the designers uh, but uh, although i said that uh, uh, this event uh, is the, the final part of our own process. We, I, we also uh, would like it to be uh, the, the starting point for uh, new discussions. So uh, I didn't ask to, to the designer to, to talk about the project that I remember you can see uh, on the fuorisalone.tv web platform. But I asked them uh, another question to, to, to about the future of design. Uh, that is innovating a specific material process is a topic that is common to to many of your projects. Uh, do you think that this field of research will become key in the future of design? Will formal re uh, research still be important in product design? So this was the question for uh, for uh, for all the participants. I would like to start with uh, Emily. Burfind, sorry for my pronunciation. No problem. Thank you so much for inviting. My name is Emily Burfind and I'm coming from a background in material research or material design, where not only the material itself, but also the processing is a fundamental part of the design. And um, in this context, I think it is very important to consider the holistic connections between material um, and production and the respective concepts and yeah especially when it comes to designing products in a more sustainable way I think social factors or ecological dimensions of materials and products play um, a more uh, like an increasing role like for example local production that for example that incorporates local raw and waste materials cannot only be used to be more environmentally friendly and save energy, but it can also strengthen a local community through participation in the manufacturing process. And in this respect, um, I find it super exciting to explore which uh, traditional but also high technological additive manufacturing methods like 3D knitting or 3D printing can be useful tools um, that help to implement circular concepts in the future and yeah there I think material research is uh, like a really important field that in my opinion is like developing very fundamental concepts for how we can and should use resources in the future and implement them in circular product concepts. Uh, 
Thank you, Emily. Uh, the next participant is Mr. Thorsten Grogan. Hello. <laughs> Also, thank you for being part here and be part of the celebration of AHACAR. Um, the question, design and art has always challenged the existing and uh, is therefore basically, it's the core task of designer and artists to rethink objects, materials and processes is uh, and to free one, yourself or ourselves for from what we is valued now is the way to con the consequence. The artist does what he wants and the designer wants what he create. This is uh, what everyone is doing. Um, um, finding his own ter term is the key we have found our way to re realize our uh, abilities to design freely based on disposal cups maybe uh, and the senseless throwing away um, we have created a new product from from this waste and to use waste or to, to use um, um, materials whatever is, uh, is is actual what you have around you to de and design new things from this this is the future for every one of us um, to to create a more sustainable earth is um, a part of the future for everyone who's living on this earth so i think it's only design and only art and and design together can can change the world okay thank you Thorsten grogan and now it's the turn of uh, uh, robbie gerard from uh, studio randale thank you salvatore um i think um the question for us as an agency um we're a classical advertising agency based in fulda is um quite hard to answer um, because normally we are not that involved in material research um, and we are more on the um, graphic and aesthetic ends of, uh, of the design process. But I think with uh, what we've heard um, of statements from the participants um, and from the jury, um, I think we can get a, a good view on what um, power um, design even on a super official level on the first side that advertising is um, can have uh, in order to um, change the world and that changing process is something um, we've we've heard before from the from the other per, uh, participants um, I think what um, really um, came out to me from the statements was um, that design is sort of uh, being responsible being responsible for your for the options um, you choose in your design process um, and I uh, also think um, that it's um, yeah that, that um, the, the the point or the topic of uh, being uh, cross-sectional and um, design as I think that's what Salvatore said um, um, to design networks is, is quite important because um, I think we can do it on our own, especially in, in advertising. Um, but um, if we think um, of the designer as an initiator of a process, um, we have to start to talk to each other. And I think that's um, what we did as an advertising agency. And our research, our formal research, I think is getting more important and will be more important in the future um, because in order to make the right decisions, um, we have to unveil what uh, options we have. And I think that is the part of research we can do as designers in, in advertising um, because we have to, um, to feel the responsibility that we have. It's not just that we're doing nice images or nice packaging designs um, that sell products, um, but I think we can um, also influence or have an influence on what the product have for a footprint um, in a sustainable way of thinking um, on the planet. And so um, that's what we try to do with um, with the My Coffee Bag and the direct trade in, in several realms in the network. So um, first in a social kind of way, because we wanted um, that 
yeah, the, 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 the over complex trading system um, gets less complex. Um, and so that people like the coffee growers uh, and like the, the, the master roasters um, on a local and a global scale um, have to uh, have more benefits out of the process so that not too many people are involved. So decomplexification, um, if you want to call it like that. Um, but what we also did with my coffee bag, with uh, what is our own brand, is um, and now we're getting to the to the to the option uh, kind of thinking. Um, when we started a few years ago, the product itself, the my coffee bag, wasn't that sustainable. There was aluminum involved, um, and there was plastic. And um, with uh, with the crisis today, with the climate crisis, but also other crises that we have on the planet, um, that's sort of a, a no go in a design process. So. Actually, now we're on level three with the product itself, and but not um, that we were standing in a laboratory or developed um, a, a new my coffee bag ourselves because we have suppliers for that. But then we made the right right choices um, by choosing and talking to the producers um, that we uh, can base the product, the my coffee bag, um, and also the packaging on cornstarch, which is um, biodegradable. Um, and so um, I think what we managed to do was to um, yeah, really round up the process and have this holistic view that everybody here um, from the participants um, took uh, himself or herself and that we were talking about and to be sort of uh, a design initiator, um, the initiator of a process that takes the right options um, and um, yeah, to create a product um, that also keeps asking itself in the future, um, am I still the right product or are there new options perhaps? I think it's uh, also a, a, an ongoing process. We can't stop um, with what we've done um, because there's always something new. And um, I think that's why research is important because we have to keep up to date and we have to um, see what new options are there, choose them and make every product better in every um, yeah, in every um, aspect of, of life and products. Yeah, so that's basically my point. And um, yeah, thanks uh, again for the opportunity to take part um, because this uh, has already, uh, I think, uh, enriched our design process. Um, and hearing these from, from all the other people is, is quite nice and seeing all the nice products and yeah. That's that's it from Studio Randale. Thank you. Thanks to you, Robbie, and for your uh, valuable contribution to the to the, this initiative. And now it's the time of Studio Grosch Klein. Um, thank you for inviting us at first, and uh, thank you for uh, selecting our video. Um, I want to introduce uh, ourselves at first. Uh, I'm Johannes Müller-Hofmann and my colleague and partner Falko Schneller. Together we are Studio Groß Klein, um, a product design studio uh, placed in the middle of Germany um, in the near of Frankfurt. Um, so um, I, I catch a code a little bit. I hope I can you can understand me very well. So to um, come back to your question. Um, so we think that uh, good design has always uh, the requirement to have an innovative handling and use of materials. But it has not always been for the good of the environment. Uh, the growing awareness in society for our environment and our uh, consumer behavior must therefore be particularly reflected in design. In the best case, designers are people with fine antennas um, for problems which they solve in their work. Designers um, like us um, are usually driven to experiment and think about how our world of tomorrow should be. Uh, the belief that there are still many uh, alternatives that we should try out is a great uh, driven force for us. Um, as designer of the consumer world, um, you have an influence uh, on what the world of tomorrow will look like. Um, but uh, we always think uh, it's not the full influence. Um, the demands placed on materials are many and varied. Um, they are functional, aesthetic, economic, and recently um, also increasing important ecological aspects, um, depending, uh, depends on each other. The, major, the majority of products are brought to market for economical reasons. Uh, in our experiences, uh, it's often the price that decides how ecological and product 
how ecological a product can be uh, and whether the consumer is willing to pay for it. Um, if we continue to act uh, at the expense of the nature, this will cost us dearly later. So, so yes, we believe and hope that the uh, experimental and alternative way in the material process will gain more and more importance as it reacts more agile to the new requirements. And um, but it is rather to be seen as an initiator that shows new possibilities. Um, so formal research will probably continue to determine the majority of research as it is necessary basic work. And we believe in a coexistence and in the best way in, in complementary and fruitful relationship. So. Um, so our studio, um, Coast Klein, sees itself not only as designers, but also as consultant in innovative and sustainable material processes. And yeah, so um, we are very grateful that we are there invited and selected. And um, yeah, thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, this is, this was the last contribution from the, the participants and now it's time to, to say thank you to, to the participants also who applied and uh, wasn't uh, selected. I Let me invite you for the last time to, to see all the videos, all the projects uh, on uh, forisalone.tv website. Uh, and well, thanks to Marco San Micheli, thanks to Nadine Vicentini and uh, Peter Jäger. Uh, most of all, thanks to, uh, to the Goethe Institute and the AHK to, uh, for, for, this, uh, for this opportunity, for this uh, event. And uh, I look forward to see uh, what's coming next. So, ciao to everyone.